Welcome to Only the Strongest, the only halfway to podcast that arrives fashionably late with sincere apologies, but a lot of swagger, I guess. We're I'm late, not buying it. late in like more than one aspect here. <laughs> Evan was late to the podcast. <laughs> We're late putting this podcast up. It should have been yep. up this morning. Yeah. It's a lot so of, nice. yeah, a lot of late over here. And uh, We were hit by a I, slew of, of things though. We were sick. I was sick. Blue was sick. Evan's got flesh eating bacteria. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's a bunch of stuff, but, uh, so yeah, we apologize getting this one a little late out to you all, the listeners, uh, but we are delighted to be recording it all because finally we have the man, the myth, the legend, the, uh, monitor formerly known as Graduado Steve. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Steve, man, thanks for being on. We appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we all, Steve and all of us go way back. Um, we all train together in Colorado. Uh, Steve is now uh, helping run that program out there, uh, teaching classes and traveling and doing everything. And we've been meaning to have you on forever. And it seems like it just never lined up. And then now it has. I was like, man, finally, why the heck haven't we had Steve on? So we've got Steve. Also, his his uh, I should add his actual name is Kebranos. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> it's not just Steve. he's Steve. not just known in the capital uh, world. As Steve. By now, it kind of is just you know money towards Steve. At this it's point. just Steve. <laughs> you can just call him Steve, right, Steve? Very few actually know me yeah, <laughs> as I, Steve. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Who calls you Kebranos? That's literally that everyone else you. that doesn't live in Colorado. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cabra knows it is. He will always be monitor graduate of Steve. Yes. <laughs> or professor graduate of Steve. Growl. <laughs> yeah. I always I think of it as it's like a it's like a prince situation. There's no first or last or other name. It's just this it's just one Steve. name. Like, yeah. Next oh, year his name Steve. will be a symbol. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. I'm know. pretty sure the like the dudes in Japan doing Capoeira know you as Steve. Possible. <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh we are gonna we're gonna talk about some unpopular opinions way back when maybe a, two months ago something like that somebody put on the capoeira subreddit hey what are you guys's unpopular opinions about capoeira and we read it through at the time and we did want to talk about it. we had a bunch of other stuff lined up for episodes we didn't really get around to it so we're finally getting around to it here and we thought also uh it'd be fun to bring steve on for this one uh i don't know about you guys but reading through the subreddit page was kind of funny because i hated pretty much all of those opinions like i disagreed with almost every single one and i was like man these opinions are unpopular because they're all really? wrong that's why. i was all about them <laughs> i liked a lot of them actually yeah. <laughs> so this is oh, gonna okay. be a fun podcast <laughs> just, just <being> <laughs> all right fair fair uh do you guys want to talk at all about the the subreddit, or do you just want to dive into our own unpopular I just like that the subreddit blew up. There was like a hundred replies on this one. Apparently everybody's got an opinion. They've been holding out. I mean, I feel like I'm, I expanded on a couple of them that I agreed with. I think some some were kind of ridiculous, but I think all of them have. I can see where the heart of a lot of them were. Yeah. So if you're interested, we could, we could probably link it at some point. Yeah. We can go one by one. Notes. But yeah, I think we should go round robin a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. With uh, that. Well, Steve, it's since you're the honored guest, it's yeah. your choice whether you want to go first or you want to wait. I will wait. I will wait. Oh, okay. Really? Oh, wait. Passes. Oh, man. Everybody pass gets a the pass. Right. <laughs> yes, I will wait. He only gets one. Everybody gets one. All right. Daniel, that's you then. Oh, am I going first then? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, this is the one I came up with on my own, and I, you know what, I don't even know if I 100 percent agree with it, but I, I do agree that. There should be more uh, delineation between styles of groups than just Hejanao, Contemporary, and Angola. Because I don't, like, there's so many different styles within Contemporary and different, you know, ways of training, different methods of training, different, you know, ideas behind it. Uh, even in Hejanao, I'm sure in Angola, I haven't trained as much there, but I'm sure there's the same kind of idea. But De depending on just like the group name is really the only thing you can go off of. But there's a lot of things that, you know, may or may not 
jive with you if you're training with that group. So I think there should be more delineation of styles in Capwitta, uh, like labels in that Wouldn't sense. Wouldn't that take away your Malaysia then? If you're like, hey, this is my style. No, I don't think it's, it's, it's more for people that are t- going out and trying to find a group to train with. Oh, like the ones that want to something. be like ninja. You know, if I want to go to a versions. class and I, yeah, and I, I threw down a couple ideas and these are just like super serious, uh, like, the, this uh, like a chill Rasta <laughs> vibes, <laughs> you know, the chill Rasta vibes, uh, the wannabe MMA fighter vibes <laughs> where <laughs> it's just a throwdown every night. Uh, the zoo, new Zion spiritualists, uh, there's a couple of groups out there. <laughs> the purists. So yeah, the purists. For sure. Uh, yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Should there be... It's either that or I'm kind of going along the set of like, there should just be straight cap Capwitta and there shouldn't be labels for it. And then people should accept whatever a group has and mm-hmm. not try and cater to their own wants or needs. I think if we're going to if we're gonna start labeling everything, then we should go ahead and just use Latin names like they do for <laughs> species. <laughs> so... This way you get to you have to learn Portuguese and Latin if you want to train capoeira. Uh, I can see I, that. Yeah. It's an interesting thought. I kind of like the idea of labeling a tradition because it does give you a little bit of a better or it gives you something to hang on to when you're talking about training methodology. I think our group, the one that we grew up in, was a little bit more on the violent side. We had to train a lot of takedowns, a lot of grappling-esque stuff. And so maybe it'd be kind of nice if they did let you know up front, like, hey, man, this is the wannabe jujitsu style of capoeira. And then you'd be like, oh, okay, I don't want to do leg locks, so I'm going to go to this other place. You know, not that there was, not that there is another place in town. That, that's obviously, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like, you got, yeah. there's one school and that's it. And if you don't you like to, get, if you, you don't want to train with the, like, the chill Rastas mm-hmm. who are in your town, then <laughs> yeah. you're, you're out of luck, man. Too bad. Yeah. That's a decent opinion. Th- Not super unpopular. I think it's... I don't think. Well, okay. Maybe a little bit. I'll tell you my unpopular opinion. Let's hear it. Number one, nobody likes this, but Capoeira should be trained on mats. And I don't want to hear all you old fuddy buddies <laughs> complaining about your knees and your grandma ankles and your pinky toes getting caught. Uh, I just think it's better. Fight me. I disagree. Uh, well, surprise, yeah. surprise. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> Not necessarily for it being on mats. I do think a good floor. I don't think you should train on like concrete. I think you're. I don't. I don't think you should train on grass, especially like having only all the worst Lombardi or Rio de Janeiro train on concrete. I feel like uh, <laughs> concrete describe. makes you a man, though. I think a on Marley concrete. floor. Marley mm-hmm. is the perfect training conditions. Is that what y'all get, have? Yes. Of course he's saying that. <laughs> Is this like Bob you Marley? Are, get, the, are you guys chill rosters? You don't get too there? much you don't get too much slide. The floor, if it's built right, it has a little bit of spring to it. If I'm not mistaken, you guys have floor. a floating floor down there. Yeah. It's a Marley floor. Yeah. Is that what that's called? Yeah. Oh, it's a floating well, the, floor. The coat on top is a Marley. Yeah. I actually. The floating is just pool noodles. Yeah. That's underneath the plywood. So it takes the shock and stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's good for you. Yeah. Not none of that gymnasium shit where mm-hmm. you're going to feel like you're going to break your legs and stuff like that. For yeah. going to Come on now. <laughs> you know what? I'm, on, I'm with Steve on this one. I, I do like the floating floor <laughs> a lot. But all? I think that, I mean, obviously every Capoeira studio has a bunch of money lying around that they are just like, what should we do with this $60,000? Oh, we should revamp our floors. In which case, this is what you should do. You should do three quarters mats but then you reserve a small area for training hand spins because you can't train hand spins on the mats but then you're like okay over there is the hand spin section over here is everything else and then also you put the hold so that the hold is kind of half and half and so you have to structure your <laughs> you game watch out like, for okay that if i'm on the yeah like when i'm on the wood wood floor side of the hold like that's when i break out the spins but then when i'm on the mat floor side that's when i do my flips I, like I think that uh-huh. that's the simplest solution I could possibly think of. It just seems easiest. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. No, nah, Steve's right. I kind of like those floors as a second option. <laughs> what I hate is having bachizados on like gym floors that are like concrete and hardwood oh. and like just bruise your feet just for training on it. Yes, we're soft Americans. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely agree. 
You guys don't like training cap wedding on grass? I actually don't mind it, but everybody hates it. Yeah. It does get a little I don't easy. mind grass either, I don't mind it but either. it does uh it is hard. I feel like I get tired really quickly on grass. Yeah, it does make you very exhausted. Yeah, it's better it's than good sand. Workout. Better than sand. Yeah, I will not. Sand is the sand. worst. Yeah, it just sucks. Yeah. It's terrible. All right, back to uh Vada or Steve, an unpopular opinion. Throw them out. Sure, I've got one. I've said this on the podcast before, but it was a long, long time ago. Uh, so we're going to recycle it. I'll but still I, disagree with you. Uh, yeah, I think I think you guys probably will disagree with this one. But I think that the uh, the inst- who the instructor is of the class doesn't matter a whole lot for how the students progress over time. I think that it's much more about the environment and the training atmosphere and so the instructor is responsible for putting that together in the first place but once you have an established group and you have maybe a couple of advanced students a little bit of intermediate and then a fair amount of beginners once you kind of get to that point I think the instructor is more of a figurehead than really a leader or anything it becomes more of just like hey I'm the one who's going to count things off to make it easy for all of us and less about like because you're training with me, you're going to become really good capoeiristas. I just think that there are so many, like, capoeira across the United States looks and feels to me fairly similar, even though the teachers will have wildly different personalities. And I've even, you know, there's plenty of students who have had really shitty instructors, but have somehow managed to overcome those odds. And you're like, okay, so maybe the shitty instructor doesn't actually matter that much. And that implies that a good instructor doesn't actually matter that much. This is my, my theory and my suspicion. The instructor at past a certain point becomes more of a figurehead than anything. When do you think that point is? I think it's like, I think it's like after the studio has climbed out of the hole. So, after opening his doors, I, w- I would say like somewhere between two to four years ish. I know that's not long enough to have advanced students, but that that's long enough to get some good intermediate students and then bring in a bunch of beginners as well. Interesting. I'm torn. I really want to fight that one, but he makes a little bit of a point. I feel like it's 50 50. Yeah, I can agree with that to a certain extent. Some schools can't get there if they have that bad of an instructor. They're not going to build said utopia because they suck as people or as teachers or whatever. Because I feel like... I don't know. Did you guys ever... Did you ever get the feeling just standing at the front of class like, this? you guys can teach yourselves. Like, you're all doing just fine. Like, I don't, I don't need to be up here. <laughs> Everyone's doing good. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Right. I, I can see that to a certain extent that they can learn on their own or go out and learn from different groups and things. Okay, uh, enough of my nonsense and and uh, inadequacy issues about teachers, I guess. Um, Steve, all you, man, what's your first okay, unpopular opinion? My first opinion? unpopular opinion is that during the bachizado, during the ceremony itself, you need a freshly clean white pair of abadas. Leave your brown ones at home. <laughs> like a brand, like a separate pair, <laughs> or a completely a pair? brand new, completely pair. separate pair. Mm. Not washed, not Faded. not wet. <laughs> Have a brand new, not swassy. I mean, it's it's your. It, we we literally call it your baptism, and you're showing up dirty. <laughs> That man know. has a point. We, we <laughs> but clean I, you, though. I play it's best in soggy <laughs> pants. <laughs> I just need the soggy. Yeah. I need people to know I train hard. <laughs> yeah, like dirty you sh- you sh- the bottom of your pants. You shouldn't be stepping on the bottom of your pants. Take care, take care of your abadas for the ceremony. For the ceremony particularly. I agree with we, that. Uh, we had a friend who Casey taught with in Boulder for a really long time, Taturana. <laughs> and 
the joke was that he kept his cord in a <laughs> vault somewhere, like a humidity controlled vault. Actually, that's true. Because you never saw his cord. And then he'd bring but it, it would, out at the bocchisato and his cord would be <laughs> It would like glow. I don't know what he put on it. It would. You, you, like, we would have all gotten cords at the same time. All our cords would be all faded and gray. <laughs> and then his would be so shiny, you couldn't even look directly <laughs> at it. You'd be like, Tatarana, what the hell, man? So, yeah, you, we need to do that with a pair of Abba does. Gloss, pull it out of the vault. Out. No, you just yeah. put it in that, in that vault. Nice. I can get behind that. A cryo chamber for your cord. <laughs> the cryo chamber. Wait, that's yeah. one. That's great. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Cool. And that's one that everybody agrees on, I feel like. And if you don't agree on it or you have not thought about it out there, we're talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So I got All right. I, I've got one here. Right, yeah. So I think first. too many instructors, uh, well, students and some instructors are afraid or don't know how to play people of different styles. And they don't do it well. They don't adapt their games and they don't. Uh, know how to interact with somebody who's not throwing the same types of movements back at them that they're throwing. Agree? Mm, I, I, not really. Or is that, it takes is, two to tango, Bonesy. Like yeah. Is it like both instructors? No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that depends on the school. Mm. Like if the, like yeah, if, like if the instructor is specifically... Like if I feel like that's the school that has cookie cutter students where all of their students look like their instructor. So therefore, if they played somebody that didn't play like their instructor, mm. their cop weather would be terrible against other people. Okay. Yes, yeah. I think I think a lot can fall into that trap. Absolutely. Maybe not instructors. I think students. It happens to more often, but I think that's one of the biggest delineations of like advancing from kind of beginner through intermediate to advanced is. Hmm. Learning to play different styles and how to adapt your your game to somebody else who's not throwing back where you're used to and thinking on your feet. Yeah, it's is probably... That, is that popular or unpopular? Of, I don't even know. That's just an opinion, man. Okay. That's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, uh, my next unpopular opinion is the Bimba sequences just need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes those things. And oh, don't man. try and argue that they somehow fit. Yeah. This is like trying to bring some 1970s law into 2022, okay? No. Just no. Uh, nobody likes training them. Nobody finds it useful. Nobody uses sequences like that anymore. Nobody uses Kokori and Bensal to that extent at all. It's like cooking with one spice continually. I don't know. I don't like them. Yeah, I feel like I'm you're sure going to enrage some people with this. They're just above my it. head, and I'm just not smart enough to see the use of these sequences. <laughs> you know what? And the tradition that they hold. If you truly disagree. I memorized them all. I yeah. did my part one time, once upon a time, and... I wiped my memory clean of those. <laughs> They're gone. Oh, I still know them, but I agree that they are outdated. They don't help you that much. I think, if anything, they just They're are so more boring. of a traditional like aspect of, of training than really helping you with anything else. Well, it's not helping you with... Well, I don't know. Well, I, I'll tell you this. The first time I seen the sequences of Bimba was actually in the little book of Capoeira, <laughs> surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I've only ever seen them again in workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't think they should go, but like, I agree that they not used in today's game and things of that nature. So like, I think it's cool for like a workshop thing. Yeah. Even then, I don't know. I get it. Like every, it's like a rite of passage, you know, and every student <clears throat> is going to learn something from having to memorize sequences, you know, and that somehow will help their improv. But those are not the sequences I want my students memorizing and displaying over and over in the hall. <laughs> I just don't like them. Yeah, that's no, that's a compelling point. I'd be lying if I said I was ever excited to train the beam right. sequences at a workshop when it's like, okay, we're going to go through the eight sequences here. It's like, okay, right. here we go. Let's break out, break uh, out the Kepwood so, textbook and we'll start on chapter three. Yep. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it does it does really feel like that it feels a little bit like open up the textbook here we go uh i i wouldn't be sad 
if the Bemba sequence has vanished from modern Capoeira. Uh, I would be sad if, if you know, all of Bemba's legacy vanished. That's not what I'm saying. But the sequences themselves, uh, Azul, I, I'm with you on that. I'm Does that fond. include the throws? And I, I would, I'm not fond of like my students learning them either. If I had students, I wouldn't be like, this is where you should go to look for value. I'd say there, there are many other things to look at first. And then when we get right down to the end of the list, then we can talk about mm-hmm. those sequences. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, where do the throws stand on that? It's the same thing. Same. I think they're the awful. throws are cool, though. I like, think they're stupid. I think they look they, cool. They hurt. They hurt to train them off top <laughs> well, so you're, like, throwing each other's backs out by, like, hey, let me throw this 200-pound man. Let me bend over and then pull him over my back and somehow come out alive on the other side. But I agree I, they're not experience. taught well. But I also agree but that I, I also cool. feel like a lot of copper is just not taught well when it comes <laughs> to takedowns and or stuff like that. Like, yeah. they, 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 there's no good teaching. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, but like the throws look cool. And what's funny is with the 12 sequences is I w- I've never taught them and I probably never will. Aren't there but eight? After, Case yeah. in point. <laughs> but but like after a certain point, I will judge you if you've never heard of them and didn't do that. <laughs> I will judge you for not going through the miserable crap that I went through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Uh, I, I don't like the throws either. And I agree that, and some of them, there's a lot of throwing somebody f- from the neck. Those are the ones that I like. Yeah. And I agree them. that they're awesome Again, and they're just not usually taught well. Cause it's just like, all right, I'm going to demonstrate it once. And now you go do it. And now you're supposed to trust this person Ta-da. that you've never done this before. You know, they've never done it before, but you're giving them your neck <laughs> and they're just supporting your whole body, <laughs> your whole body with their, with your neck. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. What other uh, unpopular opinions you guys have? Um, I feel like if you are a guest at somebody else's event um, and you're not a mestre, you need to take at least one workshop. Oh, yeah. And not just I sit on the that. side Ooh. and judge everybody. Instead of just nice. sitting there and just being there, just being a bump on the log, I feel like you're there um, – if you're not teaching a workshop, you should definitely take at least one. You don't got to take everyone, but take at least one. Show some respect. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I don't, I don't even know if that's unpopular because if you look at like yeah. the populace of Capwita, the people who are going to disagree are like the top 1%, but everybody else can be like, yeah, take the workshops. We're all here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> It is cool. It's really cool, though, when somebody does, you know, I remember that being a a student and like a professor would all of a sudden take a workshop. And it is a little bit intimidating. But then if you have to, if you end up working with them on a sequence, sometimes you get to know them a little bit more on a personal level. And then they stop being intimidating and you get to start feeling like, oh, this this person is a human being who does capoeira. I'm a human being who does capoeira. Like we have so much in common. Let's chit chat. This is great. (laughs) Uh, whereas yeah if they stand off to the side with their arms crossed looking judgmental you're like man this fucking guy over here is scary that's like the first time i've heard evan say let's chit chat this is great (laughs) those words have never (laughs) uttered his mouth before i'm just so excited well it leads it leads to a lot of good good mood if you got higher chords, people with titles, professor, instructor, contra mestre, mestre. You got those guys training in the workshop with you. When you see them in that hold of Friday night or when you play them Saturday for your chord, you just feel it's more comfortable and it's a more genuine game that gets played that way as well. Mm-hmm. No, I think it's I think it's what you guys said. It's a good opinion and it's unpopular to the one percenters that don't give a <laughs> one <laughs> percent <laughs> they do what they want <laughs> all right what's yours awesome um yeah oh, movement cool. names should be regulated and too many groups have too many different names for movements and all it causes is pain and arguments yeah, among man. people for no reason just because one person labeled it one thing for another thing yeah so you know i'm gonna uh pose that we start the uh the pasa pay uh you mean translation? French. No, the Pasipé <laughs> translation, and we're just going to have the, the Pasipé registry of Capoeira movements. And Pasipé is the first one, and <laughs> Melodie French no longer exists. Wait, what? 
Actually, if you go to Batuki, Meluji French is not. Meluji French is not. See what that's called the argument in Batuki. Begins. Well, it's Batuki. What about every other group? That's what we would call Armada. Is there Meluji French? Oh, and you see now. Yeah, all kinds I, yeah. Of aren't you stuff. pissed? Okay, well, yep. yes. I'm... And that's my unpopular opinion is the same thing, <laughs> but with chord that. systems. Uh-huh. I hate going to a new bachizado and I just see a random wrapped chords of like five different colors. I'm like, what? How long have they been training? I don't even know. You know, no, and then you see an orange chord and a purple chord. Oh, that bright red. Chord. That's a mystery chord. And a, uh, is bright it? red. In yeah. It group? is. <laughs> no, not yeah. every group. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. I wish Capoeira would just get together and be all on the same page for all those. Uniformity would be cool. It would definitely be cool. Yeah. What about that personality? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I disagree about the movement thing. I think that the movement name should be left uh, to be decided by the individuals, even though it is very confusing. And I get mad when someone insists on, on calling it Meologi French. So you're like, dude, that name, it takes an hour to say that name. And I got to say it 90 times in this class while we're doing this sequence. Let's just call it Pasa Pay. <laughs> but I, the language stuff is interesting because it's kind of like different groups get s- sort of sectioned off or environmentally isolated. And then they come up with their own weird names for stuff. And it's always interesting to learn about that or see why. Like, why do you guys even call it this move? You know, like weird old moves like Habu Jihaya and whatnot. And you're sort of like, man, where did this even come from? And then why is it that the name migrates from we keep the same name, but then we move it over to a different movement? I think all that stuff is really like... interesting. But I do agree about the chord system. I wish that the chord system were more universal. And I think it should actually be more systematized. If we are going to have chords, it should be a much more rigid system than what we have. Well, what was Steve just going to say? Oh, hold on, hold on, quick, hold on. Real quick, real quick. I do feel like the names is cool as long as you don't look at me different for not knowing what this move is because I'm not from your school. Yeah. We just did that tonight. Me and Bon Z <laughs> and we're fighting over a name. And like, we're from the same because, school more or less. Like, so <laughs> yeah. I, we, we, went, we was in, uh, when, when I went to visit Casey and Azul in L.A., we go take a class, and um, they did uh, Armada G. Costa, and mm-hmm. it's literally what we just call Armada. And so everybody looking at me all funny because I don't know what an Armada G. Costa yeah, is. Yeah, and I'm exactly. like, where I come from, this is just an Armada. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, got to complicate things. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm cool. With, I, feel like, I feel like the names is cool. Just don't judge other people because they don't know something because they're not from your house. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. That happens all the time, though. Absolutely. Like, oh, you plebe? You don't even know? This is called Mea Luigi French, but all. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I, I refuse to call it that as a matter of principle. All right. But talking about chord systems, universal would be nifty, but more systematized, I think, would be even more nifty. It shouldn't be this this brief layout of requirements for the different chords for the student chords. Maybe you're a little bit more lax, but the further you get up in the ranking system, I think the more inflexible the requirements should be. One of those requirements should be, or like there should be different buckets for the requirements. So some of them pertain to the movement, some of them to the music, and then some of them to sort of an other category or like a miscellaneous category. Cause Obviously, not everyone is going to excel at the movements or at the music, but we've talked about a million times how many how many different ways there are for somebody to contribute to the group. And as long as you build that into the chord system, I think it makes it easier to advance people without having some whisperings, you know, like sometimes I would I would be having two students in front of me where it's like one student is way, way more talented but I just don't like the guy and the other student is not very talented, but I feel like they bring a good energy to class and I want to give those two people the same rank. And then it, because of the way the, the requirements are laid out, it feels like there's a dissonance there, even though I'm trying to say like, well, no, there's this other intangible thing. So you just put that into the court system for the beginning. But isn't this person, you know, always caters the picnics for our 
street hall does or something, and that's worth a graduato chord. Yeah, we've had we've had many episodes talking about this, and we'll continue to. But how do you put because... an intangible into a tangible list? Oh man, I know. Question yeah, and, yeah, I, it's not <laughs> great. I admit, I'm. I haven't fully worked it out. I like uh, the idea. Keep your eye on the the horizon and uh, I'll I'll print out some only the strongest spreadsheets that all groups are welcome to (laughs) use for their chord requirements at your next spot. She's out you don't even have to think about it. You just go to our website. We don't actually have a website, but so good luck finding that. And then you download the spreadsheet and then you test your students. You just take a, take a quick picture of yourself and then it'll tell you what chord you are. (laughs) 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 That's funny. (laughs) <laughs> What's your next one? Let's let's do a couple more. You got Steve, got anything else? Um, yeah, workshops. Uh, oh. Let's um, <clears throat> let's not try and reinvent the wheel here. I don't I don't feel like I feel like when most people teach workshops, they're way too complicated and people don't get anything from them. Like if I haven't taught my student how to do helicopter in the last two years, you're not going <laughs> to teach them how to do it in an hour. Um, Hold my fun. beer. <laughs> that's, that's a very good point. Um, bring, I feel like workshop should be you teaching an idea, not a new series of moves and things of that nature. Like, like I've been, I've done workshops where people have been like, "Oh, teach my students how to do backflips," and it's just like, well, if you couldn't teach your students how to do backflips, I'm not going to do that today either. Mm-hmm. So I think a concept sticks more than anything like if you notice when people take workshops the thing that they usually remember is the songs or something like that and they can't tell you too much of the besides like your hungry eager two three year students that write Mm -hmm. down everything and they record their sequence (laughs) and stuff and they want to see it all over again Mm -hmm. because they haven't gotten tired of it yet um (laughs) you're not gonna teach it like like uh if I if I'm wanna if I wanna teach you Piaggi Mao, like if I wanna teach you a concept behind a Piaggi Mao, everybody needs to already know Piaggi Mao. I can't spend the first thirty minutes of that workshop teaching you how to do mm-hmm. Piaggi Mao. For sure. I agree with that. So come with a concept. Yeah, and don't That's reteach the same workshop eighty times. Oh yeah. People know. It's just like yeah. a stand up doing the same same <laughs> spiel their workshops over and over. Point. Yeah. <laughs> don't be don't don't do the same Keshada Armada Esquiva Frontal for fifteen yeah. <laughs> minutes in the beginning of your workshop. We've exactly. seen this shit before. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a good point. I'm having a lot of yeah, <laughs> flashbacks of Bonda Bonda Transada here. I don't know how many Bonda Transada workshops I've taken. Yeah, hundreds easily. Nah, Steve, that's a that's a really good point. And especially if your workshop falls I mean your workshop's always going to fall in the middle of a long weekend. Students are going to be learning a ton of stuff. I, I like the idea of giving them something easier to remember rather than trying to stack on a, a whole nother crazy sequence. I'm trying to think if I've had, if I took any workshops where I really learned like a brand new movement and then ended up using that in my game later there's only one that i could think of what was like that and it was when mystery ninja came mm-hmm. back from brazil back in the day sometime in the 2000s and taught everybody what i call passage or queixada de chão. you guys know that right like that negativa kick yeah i don't even know how to explain it like yes. i taught that in yeah, a workshop yeah. and everybody just decided that that was the bee's knees and it caught fire and now everybody does it but I remember that one distinct workshop for that reason. Yeah. I it's the only one that pulls that off, though. <laughs> I remember the... the ca- That's also a really yeah, easy Yeah, movement. exactly. It's not technically difficult at all. Basically, here's a, Maybe a, a little harder one is the, the Kanguru Melua. Uh, Mr. Kanguru taught that at, at a ninja event. And that's, I guess, more of a concept between stringing Meluas together. But that one's also pretty sweet. That was a new move. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep coming out of here with this one. I think is a unpopular opinion. I don't think you guys are keep gonna it agree. Going. But I think it's weird to show up in an event, even if you know people there and expect to be housed and not make any prior planning for housing. Would you have said that when you were 20, though? Yeah. I don't think you would have. I, I think you would have housed anybody that you were asked to house when you were 20. 
Maybe I, I just I just but adult. I still think it's a weird thing I now guess. that you should try to have a plan when you go to an event, especially if you haven't made yeah. If you don't know the people extremely well, then you can't just show up on their doorstep if you're not like family. But Capoeira Anything? is a family. Well, yeah. <laughs> is it if you've never met them before? Yeah, man. How many family members do you have that you haven't met that you could show up at their house <laughs> and Dozens. stay on their couch? Dozens. Yeah. Well, since my dad started that second family. All of her family is Mormon, <laughs> so this is a bad example. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think, I think uh, younger Steve yeah. would definitely agree with just popping up and expecting somewhere to stay. Me now, don't you can't stay with me if I don't know you. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's just how it is. That's what I'm saying. And I won't go anywhere now if I don't have anywhere to stay or if I if I don't know people there now. Like, yeah. So it's definitely an age thing, I think. Yeah, probably. I'm curious. Yeah, and the other thing too is is just like keep in mind how complicated bachisados are to put on. It's a lot of pressure to put on the hosting group. And usually that's like one single person is responsible for everything. So you're putting a lot of pressure on them. They have all these other things to manage. And then you show up unannounced and you're like, Hey, also I need a place to stay tonight. It's like, okay, just pile on, man. Why don't you like, I got cords to die tonight. I got to be at the airport at four in the morning tomorrow to pick up yes. the so-and-so. I got to make sure that like the bocce's auto has a vegan yeah. option because all these goddamn <laughs> hippies over here, and now I gotta find a place for you to see. Yeah, yeah no, I always you. just thought it was so like I I hear it now, and I've heard it so many times. Like after the last like the holiday ends, and they're just like, all right, anybody who doesn't have a place to stay, come meet me over here. I'm like, who doesn't have a place to stay? It's 11 p.m. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> like how how rude. Bonzino's over there just shaming everybody. Looking, they're just like, man, I just want to go home and sleep. Bonzino's like, what's wrong with you? You're a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever hold awesome. an event, I'm just going to say, meet me in the utility closet if you don't have a place to stay. I'm just going to lock him in the utility closet until <laughs> morning. I'll be back at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll be back at 9 a.m. Or uh, uh, we did. For what? What's your next one? Popular opinion. I'm trying to segue into one that. I don't know. Uh, what is it? Well, no, quick, quick story, which oh, is yeah. that on the other side of this, sometimes the host will not have a place for you to stay, even though you might have been told that you did have a place to stay. One time going up to Sue Cow's event, we there was an unexpectedly high number of guests and we didn't all have a place to sleep. So we ended up a bunch of us slept in his studio. <laughs> the bad part of this was, I mean, one, sleeping on the floor is not great. But two, this his studio was right above a CrossFit gym and CrossFit starts early in the morning. So we finished Bachizato Friday night holiday at like 11, went out to eat and get a drink, got back, went to sleep probably like, I don't know, like you guys remember yeah. like 2, 3 in the morning maybe? And then 5.30 a.m. just dumped that <laughs> us, waking yeah, us back rough. up, just like that ready to go. Sure. That was one of the rougher nights. That was nights my uh, other unpopular opinion is there should be no Capoeira done anywhere ever before noon in whatever time zone you're in, period. <laughs> Capoeira is an afternoon and evening sport. Oh, I agree on that one, too. Oof. All you morning Capoeiras are weird. That's a, yeah, I can agree with that Definitely one. Definitely sure. Bachi's Auto Weekend Saturday morning workshops are the worst. Yeah. I'm going to disagree. Everybody I mean, loves getting yelled at by their mestre at 9 a.m. with a hangover. Yeah, if you do a workshop at nine o'clock on a Saturday, you're just an asshole. I think I think I used to do the conditioning class at eight a.m. on Saturdays. Yeah, but you know, I I will disagree with Azul's opinion there because I I like it. I mean, if you're not going to go for like the the Capoeira Group morning run, you should at least have some conditioning what workshops Cap in the Wittig morning. Group morning run. <laughs> I feel like if you're doing if you're doing Capoeira morning runs, yeah, Friday night was miserable. <laughs> You, you have no have friends, time. nobody hung out with you <laughs> the night before, so of course you up early, bright eyed and bushy tail. Oh, we hung over passing our ibuprofen at ten thirty. <laughs> now I'm just now I'm just developing a new unpopular so opinion is that every Capoeira event should have Saturday morning 
runs around the city the with, we, with your pure whites on. Everybody in oh, single file no. line, oh, military so style. Worse. Get him off here. <laughs> <laughs> no more for you. Uh, but Ollie, Steve, you got any would, other you see you haven't yeah. even mentioned yet? I think I mentioned all three of mine. I came in with three. I think I'm tapped yeah. out over here. I mean, my other unpopular opinion is that this podcast is the greatest thing that happened <laughs> in Capoeira since Mestri Pashchinia started writing yeah, stuff Yeah, it's probably down. pretty unpopular. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I think I most, most Capoeira is most likely don't agree with that, but uh, I will whatever. say this is probably the most consistent Capoeira podcast. <laughs> Bam! Ever. There you go. You say on our one episode we release it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. We'll Drawing say. attention That's to that, man. Just because the show, this podcasting is not as easy as it looks, I suppose. Uh, Azul, more unpopular opinions simmering away. Oh man, there. so many. Yeah, bring a towel to class if you sweat so you're not slicking up on everybody you're playing with. Uh, gyms should have showers and towels available to all of the students because like every everybody studio? stank. Yes, every studio. Oh, really? Uh, you think that's going to improve the, the sexual assault problem? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. All right, keep your sweaty arms. You can have them. Uh, no, I, I don't, other than... Keep your hygiene, folks. But that's pretty popular, I would think. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Oh, I, I got All one right. more. Well, Here's cool. an unpopular opinion. Here we go. A fresh one, Steve. It's oh, your right. please, fault. Please do. You didn't play at that bachizado. Oh, it yes. is your fault. One. I don't care how long the line who. was. <laughs> it's your fault if you didn't play. Nobody else's. I'm tired of this. Oh, the high courts just took over. Well, who played after them, you loser? <laughs> Aww. Damn. It's true. It's true. And how many times do you ever see a high court just say, no, no, go sit down? Nobody was going to turn you away yeah. at the base yeah. of the mountain. It's yeah. just about confidence. It's 100% your fault you didn't play. Get over it. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. Not, that is not true at all. I We have definitely seen some people try to get in. At the wrong time, like, uh, you know, two mestries are playing and some poor beginner student has Steve yelling at him right behind him. You're goddamn fall, man. And then he's like, oh, I got to jump in the water now. And he jumps in and tries to cut off a game well, that, between, that's an extreme you know, example. like, Joao Grangi and Cobra Monza over here. And then it's like, oh, no, dude, you it, get the fuck but out. Did the, <laughs> you're, you're kicked out of the group. Did the hold it in after that game? Well, I mean, that guy wouldn't go. Yeah, that's a good point. Change, so. <laughs> No, look, I think I think I think you're on to something, but I, I I think also that high courts are really guilty. I've I've had this rant on the podcast before, so I won't just uh I won't launch off on it. But I think high courts are really guilty of doing the hey, stop let's stop the hall to address the beginners. How come you guys don't go play? This is your hall to it's your <laughs> And event, then they're hoda hogs. Where it's like, man, you who's yeah. running the hall to here? The fucking high courts are. So you gotta make an avenue for the young courts. However, if you couldn't get into the Hoda through the entire weekend, like you didn't get to play one game the whole weekend, then at that point it's like, well, maybe the problem is you. You got to start looking elsewhere. So, Steve, I, I can almost agree Dude, with you. This just made point. me think of another one, too, though. I don't like where they open the Hoda to have like three or four games in the same circle where everybody's uncomfortable that they might kick each other or the people next to them. It's just a shit show. I do not like that. I get the like utility of like getting more people to play, but the games are just I don't know. The space needs to be used better or they should make actual circles everywhere that they yes. go to when they do that. But when they open one big circle but like spread the like you know, you get basically like six feet of space and yeah. good luck. Yeah. Not the to triple kick circle around you. the triple circle is really like awesome in the botches out of I think it depends on how big so, like, we just did one at the UCA Bachizado mm-hmm. on the Friday night, and the Hoda was literally the entire size of the studio. Yeah. So, it was, like, three or four games going on, but it worked out because of how spacious it was. Right. It was like if you, were, if you were bumping into other people, then you had no control. But then, like, we used to do them here in the Springs where we would just 
cut you off. We just like cut and make three different circles. Yeah. Everybody's in the I same like room, yes. three different circles. I like that. So I think I think people blocking it off, yeah. protecting. But in a tiny, if if you don't have the space to do that, then don't don't do that. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't like it. It's just awkward. <clears throat> Good stuff. Not enjoyable. Yeah. No, I do like. I think it's better than doing the separate mini hodas because the music stays stronger in the big hoda. Even if you got people breaking each other's legs because they're <laughs> stepping on ankles and stuff, two or three games, it's like, well, wait, man, wait, wait. at least Vado the solo sounded good. Like, here, I could hear the chorus. music over people's broken legs. Of all people, <laughs> but all cares. You can call it out multiple times <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I guess this unpopular opinions thing has just I, I, I'm I just like throwing yeah. darts yeah. at the wall I these no are just opinions at this point. I was like, do you find that if it did break out and you have three separate hodas now there's kind of like an exclusive hoda there's like the center one yeah, and like people are a little more yeah because Only that's usually matches. yeah but I think I don't think they would turn them away it's their fault still <laughs> yeah, it's 100% your fault. whereas if it's yeah. all the same one if it's in the same circle then it doesn't matter where you're playing. You're still in the center. People mm-hmm. are watching you. Yeah. But what have we agreed to in this podcast that, that we don't know anything? This is what we, yeah, we end up at, with every week. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Steve, yes. thank you uh, so much for, for joining us. We will definitely have you back on in the future uh, to talk about maybe something a little more personal to you and less about the un, the, the state of unpopular Meeting. opinions in cop waiting. <laughs> thank Thanks you. Thank you. Uh, if you, the listener out there, like to send us an unpopular opinion, um, possibly you disagree that our podcast rivals Mestri Postinias <laughs> in terms of Capoeira accomplishments, you can find us only the strongest podcast at Gmail or on Instagram. Thank you for listening so much. I'll talk to you next week. Apologies again for the late release on this one. We'll be back as normal two weeks. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.